it's going to be a bit shaky because I'm filming this on my phone. It's just easier than getting the bigger camera out. This is really for my reference. So there's the Genesis system over there. ECU top left, output modules bottom left and on the right. CAN bus interface at the bottom, voice module at the top. Little black box with an a aerial on it on the far left at the bottom. May match up with the unknown key fob on the key ring. Don't know what it does yet. Wheel and siren amplifier at the bottom. And another interface um, which I think is taking the CAN output from the CAN interface at the bottom there. Little black module at the bottom. Genesis relay and control system. Wiring diagram, well, fuse diagram on the front of the cover. Only covers the main circuit board, none of the other items in this box. I've removed the intercom module and the uh, inductive loop unit for the hard of hearing from the top right of the cabinet. Those two white connectors plugged into the intercom. I've removed the oops. I've removed the aluminium checker plate that ran top to bottom there to reveal this cable harness, and that allowed me to take out or start to pull out these cables that go over the headlining and all the cabling that originally went to the closed circuit TV um, and other comms related units. The wiring harness on the floor has a round multi-plug which interfaces with the multi-plug down there and the three connectors are what went into the probably the original originally the ambulance radio so that side of the wiring harness those three connectors go down to a Y point just there but that side of the wiring harness is completely redundant and could either be left as it is or stripped out time will tell I've removed all the cabling or the majority of the cabling for the battery interconnects they're nice big interconnectors but I've taken them out just for ease of access because I can now start get down to this filthy mess which is the bottom of the it's the original plywood floor it's actually quite damp and mucky but I can get to that now and I'm just really fishing out most of the cables to identify them. Some will go back, some may not. There are 300 amp, re 300 amp relays for the three battery circuits. Um, chassis, auxiliary and comms. Comms going to be completely redundant. There's also um, the sticker was missing so I've just labelled it up. There was a fuse there which is for the rear suspect, the air suspension compressor. It's 150 amp fuse. The contactors provide the chassis battery isolation via the battery guard system um, and effectively these are the split charge relays that are controlled by the Genesis ECU. The top module I'm pretty certain is the wigwag unit and emergency light control. These are all relays. Um, probably get away with just unplugging that. Shouldn't need to recover all in the cabling but it can come out because basically anything that's drawing power isn't necessary. Um, but I think that's what it is. Not 100% certain yet, but it looks very similar to the one I took out of the crafter. The relay there, the black relay is probably doing the headlight flashing, and the white relays will be doing the uh, blue lights, red lights, and all the other flashing lights that were on this vehicle. There's a small group of relays over there. I think they're part of the existing one on the van. There's a large battery connector next to it which I think relates to the large battery connector that's in the back of the van. Don't know yet, haven't been able to get into, I haven't removed that piece of the aluminium um, boxing yet to start investigating that. I'm concentrating at the moment on freeing up the cabling on this side of the van. And today, all this cabling here that disappears up into the dash, plus the remnants of all the other bits and pieces, I'm gonna try and get at. And then the next exercise is gonna be taking the headlining down because I, in order to use this camera here, I need to identify which cable it is and where it goes. I think it's that cable there. Just disappear up there. I think it is, but I'm not 100% sure. Unfortunately, none of them are labelled. 
Um, and of course, we've got lots and lots of cables here. They're all quite a lot of Mafola cables, is, so it's going to be one of these. But need to identify that and lose some of these microphones and some of this other clutter that's up there. Uh, and uh, also track down quite a lot of the cabling that's going that side because there's a heck of a lot of this that needs to come out. Um, I'm not quite sure how the blue light, uh, the headlights are wired up in this van. The chances are they spliced into the headlight cabling somewhere and obviously that needs to be reconnected in order to render this bit redundant. Then there's still a lot of cabling in the sticking out the remnants of the dashboard that needs to be tracked down so that just a standard radio can be fitted. Um, this is a, I think this is a, I was going to say, I think this is a steering wheel interface, but it can't be because it hasn't got steering wheel controls, or has it? Um, but that was in the radar harness, and I'm pretty sure that's not going to be necessary. The sad thing is that as part of the decommissioning, almost all of this dash has been dismantled. I can see there, for example, that's not on properly, which means it's been off. One thing to take note of is the way this van is built, they've got three large battery cables running dead center that would have been where the original mat was and it's part of the reason probably why they chopped the original floor mat up because it would have just had a hump in it you can see these other cables here partially covered in tape these are original peugeot cables and on the standard matting there is actually a slot in the mat for these cables to fit in and these black ones here um, they're the connectors um, there's ground battery in battery out those black cables there with the standard map that's going to be a bit of a problem to fit it over the top of it probably explains also why the battery cover didn't fit properly because the battery cover was hanging off and these, there's quite these are quite substantial cables not the another to identify there's a little block of fuses down there which I think are for the heater don't know yet what else Lots of cables dangling there that I haven't disconnected. I think they're surplus requirement. These are all part of the original vehicle. Little tiny earth lead over there on that bolt. Looks very, very fragile, but be careful with that. No obvious additional cabling in there. By the looks of it, no obvious additional cabling in there. So all the Genesis related, or the Ambus related stuff seems to be bundled in with that harness over there, including that blue wire. Um, the van doesn't have a rear view mirror fitting, so it's not going to be easy to fit a dash cam mirror. Ah, right. If I need to take the headlining down, that metal, white right metal plate is bolted to the framework. Sorry, not bolted, welded the framework, so that metal plate won't come down. Maybe this plastic thing will move independently if not maybe the headlining comes down and that all stays up don't know that might be tricky but i'd be very surprised if they built that um so you couldn't get the headlining down white white wooden blocks falling off tapes given way that was used to hold the trim piece that went up there so that needs sticking back on preferably doing it properly with some proper glue rather than double sided tape they love double sided tape these people and it works beautifully until it gives up and and it's given up there. <laughs> Explains why none of the screws are holding. Um, anything else? Taken that one out, but that one over there probably was a coat at once. They're both broken. Um, I've put the fittings in the plastic box, but they're both broken, so whether they stay there, entirely up to the owner, really. Um, fire extinguisher holder is in the back of the van. No fire extinguisher came with this van, unfortunately. Uh, I think that'll do for today. Let's get on now with um, a bit more dismantling. Have I got anything I've missed? Um, right, there are the SRS airbag cable clipped away out of the way. Ditto over there. Got a connector there. That goes to the black box. Haven't identified what that does yet. Two connectors over here. That was it. That one there, he says, that one went to the DIN rail relay holder, so that's redundant. And that one there went to the battery chargers for the torch, so that's redundant. So that can go as well. Yep, that's all I need for today. And I might post this on YouTube anyway. I've been rambling, but this is for my benefit. It might be useful to other people.
Bye for now.